Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we gon' talk. Name another podcast like this. Who gon' bring? Check, check, check it. It's a unique house. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. You know my dad walk on. Y'all don't forget to like, subscribe, follow us on all social media platforms. We're on Facebook, Snapchat, TikTok, you name it, we're on there. But definitely, if you want to see our full-length interviews, go check us out on Patreon and on our YouTube membership to see our full-length interviews. And thank you in advance. Man, hey, man, guess what, man? We got a very, very special guest today. She don't really need no introduction, man. Um, She's been... Pretty much in, out, in, out the game, in, out the game. I seen her a few times. I was so impressed with her when I first laid eyes on her, man. Uh, just her talent, you know what I'm saying? Then, you know, life took they took the toll. I seen the video, you know what I'm saying? I don't know if y'all seen the video. Did that video come out? I don't know. We about to get in all that, man. Pink Pressure's in the building. What's going on? Hey, how y'all doing? Man, <laughs> we love the fact that you came on Boss Talk 101, man. This is where we, uh, really, we get them early, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, so when you first come out and all that, if you feel to make a buzz move, this is the best place to be. So every day, evidently something special about to happen, right? Yes, sir. Man. I mean, the drinks is good. So, <laughs> so, so, good with me. so the vibe is right. They talk a little shit. I talk a lot of shit. So you know, man. the energies are matching. Man, you know, um, you know, the way we do it over here, really, we like to really just let our people know who you are, right? Yeah. Like, get to know you a little better. Mm-hmm. Pink pressure's in the building. We about to get. Let's get in our so business. So, pink a pressure. Bit. Where were you born and raised? Shit. I was born here in Dallas, Texas. Um, technically, I just go ahead and tell the truth. I was born at Plain Old Presbyterian, to okay. be exact. But you know, uh, as far as raised though, all over Texas, we mm. moved a lot. My people didn't have a lot, so I could really claim any hood I want to. I can go anywhere. I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Face card is everything. Character is everything. So I'm good everywhere. But um, my grandmother's also from the Midwest. Like she from Detroit. So. When Do you I was ever younger, go visit? Yeah, when I was younger, she moved us to Indiana. Oh, okay. Yeah, not even Detroit. We was in the ghetto country. That was the ghettoest country's place. Yeah, because like, that sounds you know, country. Country as hell, but you know what I'm saying? How old were you? Um, The first time we moved, I was like young to where I can't remember. Like We went back and forth. Cause, oh, okay. You know what I'm saying? We They got people down there or whatever the case may be, but then my mama and my grandma created a life here. So like from there, we'll go back and forth. Then my dad and his people are here. And then my mom had more kids, so it was like um, from there on. We was from Texas, so it was more like we would visit Indiana and come back down here. So you weren't raised in the household with your mom and dad together? No. Uh, there was no man in our household. It was my mom and my grandma for a little while. For the most part, though, um, you know what I'm saying? My grandmother adopted me specifically. Mm. So even when if her and my mama wasn't living together, it was always me and my grandma. Oh, okay. But my mama got four kids. I'm the oldest. Okay, so why did your grandma adopt you and not the rest? Um, <laughs> my mom got four kids, four baby daddies. So uh, when I was born, I was the first one. My mom was still young; she was seventeen. Seventeen, okay. So uh, I think she got pregnant at sixteen, had me at seventeen. So mm. therefore, when the other kids came, my mom was obviously older, older. down the line. Got she it. more so was ready to be a mom yeah. because she had had so many. But also, me and my grandmother just always had like a bond like no other, like. Not yeah. to discredit my mother, I, you only get one mama, but my grandma really like. She was that like your me. mama. Yeah, she was. I'm a grandma baby, like. Yeah. I can 100 percent say that. So it was just like even if my mama was to move out my grandma's house or go do her own thing, move somewhere else, I wanted to stay. Mm-hmm. That was my safe place. Like. Where was your dad during all of this? He wasn't in your life at all. Um no, I ain't know about my daddy at first. It was kind of just like. This who your daddy is. Uh, I never met him till I was, I want to say, 14 or 15 one time. I seen my daddy in real life maybe like a few times. I take that back. I did meet him before I got diagnosed with diabetes. I did meet him. That was what was crazy. Like, it don't run in my mama's side of the family So you at had all. to go find out so, about the daddy's side. Yeah, when I went over there, my daddy started mentioning little stuff like, oh, she do this, or, oh, I, see, I noticed this, and my people, his daddy died from diabetes. Mm. So, like, um, it was kind of random that just right around that time when I came around him and we found that out, I, like, passed out, like, a couple of days later and I actually found out that I had type 1 diabetes and I had been had it, but it was not being treated because I didn't know. Didn't when know. we was, at that time, we had lived in Indiana, like, a little small, that small little town, so it was like, the doctors just kept saying that nothing was wrong. But as soon as I went to a doctor when we got back home to Texas, like, instantly, like, they I, knew. <laughs> they knew. They was like, you been, like, these all the signs. I was skinny as hell. I was, like, 39 pounds, and I was 9 years old. 
So they was like, what's going on? Like, y'all didn't been noticed. Like, so, so those are the symptoms? What, is, what are the symptoms of diabetes? Um, my dad had it, but um, it was when he got older. So yeah, because there's multiple it. types of diabetes. But mine is juvenile diabetes, so I got diagnosed as a kid. And my pancreas don't work at all, so it's different. Like, some people can get rid of it, get better. I'm never going to. Recover on some shit. You I'm got the same with. thing Boosie got. Boosie got it, yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm going to die with it. You live with it, you die with it. Yeah, you. yeah. But, um, and I take insulin shots. Like, every time I want to put something in my mouth, I got to. See, I shot. always wonder if you could get over it because I knew growing up in Jamaica, there was this kid down the street. And I used to always wonder, he was born with diabetes. I didn't mm-hmm. know kids could actually be born with diabetes. Yeah. I'm like, so in, in my mind, I'm like, okay, so what did the mom do? What did she eat? What did she, you know what uh, I mean? It's hereditary. It's hereditary. And, and also, like, once your pancreas shut down, it's just some people, if they eating too much sugar, their pancreas get overworked and they can fix it by working out, eating healthy. Mine just don't work at all. It stop working. It's just, it's a chronic disease. Like, it's an illness. Like, Holly Berry. How Holly Berry got it, don't she? I, don't I think know, she got I it. I don't know about that. I think she do. Look it up. I'm how real does, sharp on this shit. But how does yeah. not having your, your pancreas, um, pancreas working, how does it affect your everyday I mean, all the time. Anytime, like I said, anytime I want to put something in my mouth, I wasn't a regular kid. Kids at school, like when they passed out candy and cake for somebody's birthday, they'll never let me eat it because I had to go to the nurse, take a shot, take my blood mm-hmm. sugar, do all that. Like, I didn't get to be regular. I remember on my 10th birthday, because I got diagnosed when I was nine. I remember on my 10th birthday, the doctor told me I could only, like, during the day, I could only eat a certain amount of sugar or carbohydrates. And they told me that day, like, you could have 100 carbs. And I was turned up. I was like, ooh, I could eat, like, six cupcakes. Like, I was so happy. Dirty, like, dirty that shit it, crazy. It was during the taping of the television series Living Doll, Dolls in 1989 that Holly Berry lapsed in a diabetic coma. She, yeah, shortly afterwards, she was diagnosed with diabetes. Oh, God, I never Melitus knew Berry type 1. That's and, crazy. And then... Dame Dash got it too. You know, I, I, mm. that's what I do. I'm, I'm over. <laughs> Dame Dash. He, he also another one takes shots. So uh, these are people who have have made it through. I'm just naming the people who mm. who really have had diabetes but was able to maintain, maintain. and be successful. Mm. Dame Dash, Holly Berry. These are elite names. There's a lot of people. Yeah, there's a lot of them, man. And and so I can't wait to see what you do with your diabetes like Boosie <laughs> you know what I'm saying Boosie got shot after he got shot uh, uh, he yeah. still had diabetes he had cancer and diabetes at the same time when you want something yeah, you don't let nothing stop, stop you but how did it affect you as a kid growing up because I can remember going through a certain situation medically and as a kid you get tired of taking all this medication you get tired of you know what I mean and you might stop which when you stop, you, you reap the repercussion because it's not really good, but, you know, you get oh, tired yeah, of, of it. Of course, yeah. When I was younger, it was times that I I did shit that I ain't had no business doing, like drinking a whole bunch of juice back-to-back knowing I'm not taking enough insulin to keep mm-hmm. up with. I don't have a pancreas. When regular people is drinking juice and sugar and shit, your body is making up for it that very moment. Your body is correcting it. Mine's not. So as I'm putting all this sugar in my body, I'm somewhere throwing up and a pass out because there's so much sugar in my body mm-hmm. it can't get out. We got numb to absorb it. So it was plenty of times that I crashed out or if I'm running on the field with everybody during PE and I ain't eat my little snack before and I just pass out right there. Like, it was plenty of stuff, especially when I was pregnant too. Like, that was, I was just something about to crazy. Ask you about like, that. I really didn't know my slow self. Uh, I thought I was gangster enough to breastfeed, you know what I'm saying, when six months strong, you know, you know, that's a flex. That's good. But um, yeah, she very healthy. But um, I didn't know one day I was breastfeeding and I'd start for the past, I'd check my blood sugar, it's like 28. So you're not supposed to I'm breastfeed? Like, it, the breastfeeding is the equivalent to running four miles or some crazy shit. Really? Like that. As yeah, you're no. breastfeeding, that's your why blood people, sugar just going that's down. That's why people always like, say if you want to lose the weight quick, Yes, it makes your stomach flat, yes. But in the same sense, they told me I I didn't every, know as I'm breastfeeding, I have to be eating some like supplying what I'm putting out because right. I can just pass out right there. So especially being by myself, I was in the house alone when I discovered that shit. I was scared. Like, my baby just lay here crying. I'm trying to get the juice. I'm shaking this shit. Titty out. <laughs> mm. <laughs> this the real though. Like I really, as, as just being, having diabetes, being a single mom, being young, just and learning. learning as you and go I'm still along. becoming a woman. I, I'm still trying to teach myself how to be a woman. And I say teach myself because like, it's just me most of the time. So it's You don't like, have no influence around you? I do. Every time I say no, like, when I get off the screen, then people be like, damn, they watch it back down. Like, so I wasn't there for you. I wasn't in your right. life. But it's not like that. It was just so many more times. Like, it was just me. So, like, I'm not trying to disrespect nobody, and I won't say that it's nobody. But, like, for the most part, I'm still trying to find me and become me. So, in the midst of trying to 
teach another little young lady how to become a woman and be a woman when I'm still going towards them steps, it's kind of scary because, like, I chose to do that. I'm not trying to get off topic. Right. I'm sorry. No, you no, 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 no. This, this, really this is perfect. All really in the this one, is, though, because, this is perfect. you know what I'm saying, diabetes was just, like, the kind of the icing on the cake of every other thing that was going through my mind when I was pregnant, but it definitely... Um, it definitely was different. But everybody's journey is different, and there is no book, to, no manual to tell you exactly what to do, when to do it, being a mom, being having diabetes, being a woman. Everybody grow in their own way. So you just have to just live life and pray that you do what you need to do. Man, you, you like I said, it's extraordinary that you, you've made it thus far, and I believe that you're going to be an inspiration to a lot of young girls out there mm -hmm. that have challenges in life, and I think that's the important thing is just know that people are looking at you. you you're you known. Uh, people know you. People, when I hear your name, it's a known name in Dallas, you know, and others, other places. Um, people have spoken your name to me. So I think that's live and to see who you are as a person and to get you on Boss Talk 101 and be able to see the influence that you're about to have on the younger generation, the, the children, the young girls, the people who see you, the songs you put out, like the one you, uh, the one that chapter 21, um, just to see how you express yourself, I think that helps people. What do you think? 100%. I get DMs all the time <clears throat> from people all over the world, you know what I'm saying? Because we just right here in Texas, but people all the time, just girls telling me, like, I was scared at first to come out and say, damn, I went through this, this, and this. But when you was rapping it and I could listen to it and just cry, listen to it and just feel it, like, and I ain't had to speak up and say it myself, you you know what I'm saying? Just how LaDurk be saying, he the voice of the streets. I feel like I'm the voice... I don't want to say it like that, but you know what I'm saying? The voice for just girls who, you know what I'm saying, single mom, girls who get money, girls who ain't had no mama and no daddy and no whatever, grandma babies. Like, I, I'm just, I'm, I'm I'm the voice for a different type of girl. That's that's what I say. It ain't no hot girl summer. It was, it was some cold summers. It was some, you know what I'm saying, real cold winters, and, and every season was cold. So, Man. shit, <laughs> ain't, no, ain't no fucking hot girl or nothing. I just feel like I'm, I'm a real... I say woman before anything, I'm real bitch before anything, but like I like the fact that this platform give me a chance also to just kind of just be myself because sometimes, you know, people look on the internet and may see one thing or, or hear one mm -hmm. thing and just run with that, but instead, like, <laughs> I don't know. That's Boss Talk 101, y'all. She said, yeah, y'all heard yeah. her. You know, this is the type of vibe we own over here where people are really coming on and, and really giving people a real sense of who they are so that, that they'll be able to really look into one's life and really uh, become transparent or also be able to grow, you know, their brands, looking at your brand. So let's uh, let's talk about uh, that song and the, just making of that video because that was a dope video for me. Like when I first seen it in here, uh, to be honest with you, Rain showed it to me. It was before it even came out. And <laughs> I was like, damn, you know, when you gonna put that out, nigga? You know, that, let's get, we, we need this. So just give me an understanding. Well, first of all, a lot of people seen the damn video before me. <laughs> That's why I'm just like laughing because, bro, a lot of people seen the video before me. Because one thing about Rain, he'll never maybe be the type to do this or do that. But if we get into it, he'll be like, can't see the video then. <laughs> so, like, it's funny that you say that because um, when we did the video, I need my baby. My daughter was just a little, a little nugget in that video. And um, I was staying in a little one-bedroom apartment in North Dallas. So, like, we shot half of it at the church and stuff like that. But then we just shot it, you know, giving it the real. Like, shit, I had an air mattress in my living room. Like, they showed it, you know, me and my baby playing with the toys and stuff. And didn't nobody know that was my house. They probably thought we was just using Staging love, it. Right. You know, but that was, that was really my life. So, it was like, this is my real daughter. This is me. Like, I had the little dance hills, and I threw them when I got in the church. And it kind of just represented, like... You know what I'm saying? Did I had a life, and I may be even still here and there being a life, but it's like I'm I'm looking forward to something much better because uh because my baby. What was it? What? Was it prophecy that shot there? Oh yeah, prophecy fam. That's you know my it. nigga. He, I'm the only one that he don't interview with. He only comes on Boss Talk 101. This he came. We did. We about to put the second interview out. He just left the other day. Uh, he came here before he was even doing uh, photo shoot any of that. Mm -hmm. This is his home base. So. I was gonna say he directed it. Basically, the whole thing other than rain. Nigga. You know rain. what I'm saying? For prophecy sure, rain. <laughs> prophecy is uh, the video man, the director. He was telling the light man how to hold the lights. He was doing everything. Yeah. So you know what I'm saying? He wanted it to look real and. Um, um, 
which it was, that song was 100% real. I don't do no cap rapping, but that video, you know what I'm saying? I just feel like it did what it was supposed to. It made man. made you get chilled. Man, mm. it did. It did. <laughs> Go ahead, man. Cry. It did. It's, it's, hard. it's hard as hell. <laughs> she told so me. you said, you know, you want to grow. Um, but before I get into that, tell me about a time where, because you keep saying you, you went through a lot of cold nights, cold, you know, a lot of struggle and stuff like that. Tell me about one time, one struggle that you went through and how you overcame it. Uh, I don't know. I, was just, I mean, the first thing that came to my head is uh, when I first had my baby and my grandmother and my mama and them, they had moved to Houston a minute ago. So through my whole pregnancy, I was by myself for the most part because uh, usually, like, girls get most information of learning how to be, deal with their baby or pregnancy stuff from their mama. But, like, they was far and then it was a lot of family tension. So, like, I'll just say when I first had my baby. Where was the dad? Uh, the baby dad. We this me and Lonnie. I don't know about nobody else. I don't know. This me and my. I I carried the baby. I had the baby. I, I ordered the baby off Amazon. We'll just say for <laughs> shit. And the daddy part. When I checked it, I guess they were sold out. I don't know because it was no more on the shelf. Maybe not my type. So shit. It was just us. So um, when I first had her, you know, that things they don't like to speak on is postpartum depression. Mm -hmm. That shit is real. Like real and people may be like oh that's not i mean i'm a woman i'm just I, there's no other way to put it it's real so that was probably one of the toughest like cold Explained. nights cold seasons that i went through and i really the only way i got through that 100 percent was prayer maybe some um medical edible arrangements mm -hmm. uh but other than that yeah it was 100 percent. i had to pray i had to sometimes i had to sit my baby down in her little swing let her scream cry and i would walk in the house praying <laughs> because it really wasn't nothing else that i didn't really understand i didn't really understand and it wasn't nobody i could be like why is i'm not understanding so but explain postpartum because i think everybody experiences a little bit different so how what exactly did you go through um, for postpartum well y'all talked y'all already talked about my diabetes and stuff so i was confused about a lot of stuff and it was more bodily changes that i had going on i also didn't know that like i had to change my insulin adjustments uh as i was pregnant i did i didn't know that i was supposed to be lowering some things and hiring some things and i didn't know that also like a year after you still don't snap back how you usually do so like it was so much that i was discovering as also i was 19 turning 20 i turned 20 like a couple of days five days before i gave birth so like i was just young i was just running wild mm -hmm. and now i'm just sitting down with a little baby and i don't know much so that was just scary to me like nervous i was learning so much and so much was going on and nobody was in there but me in this little one bedroom and i'm crying and doing this and emotions and you know when you first have a baby your emotions so yeah like that's, Hormones that's are crazy. Going crazy that mm -hmm. is crazy that's mm -hmm. really crazy so it was just more so like a mental thing for me like telling myself that it's just this is temporary you know what i'm saying you got to get through this though you chose to lay down and keep the baby have the baby make the baby you gonna take care of the baby, so mm -hmm. get your mind right and make the bottle and get back in there and See. wipe the butt and do what you're supposed to do. Like you just that's good. You gotta. It's more so you gotta tell yourself too, though. Like come on, it's a get mental up, thing. Clean everything, up, everything you do yourself, is a mental. You know what I'm thing. saying? But the reason why I ask you that because the people that I know that went through postpartum. They didn't want nothing to do with the baby. They they oh, they were nah. like, you know what? You hold the baby, you keep the baby. They didn't want to breastfeed. They, it was a, such a depression where they couldn't even look on the baby. That's the reason why I'm, I was asking you to, to Maybe because they had that option. When when you in my shoes and it ain't nothing, I don't care. Some days I'm sick, I'm tired, I want to sleep in. I got to get up for my baby. It don't matter what's going on. Ain't nobody else there. If she done shit it on herself and it, it's time to get up, you got to do that. Ain't no daddy finna mm -hmm. come out the room. My mom ain't coming. My grandma ain't coming. I got to get up and do that. She hungry. You got to get up and make her breakfast. She can't feed herself. So it wasn't maybe not to be disrespectful, but maybe them people had that option to say, I, oh, I can't do that. I didn't have that. Even if my body maybe did feel like that. There was none of that. The mother, the mama in me, the real bitch in me told me, we like this, and ain't no mm -hmm. ain't no switching up. If we like this, and ain't no switching up. Wow, let's get into the uh, the you you did a live performance. Uh, uh, don't judge me. Don't judge me. Yeah. Uh, what was that about? Break that down. Um, that was more so. Uh, sometimes I just like to get on the beat and vent, like how how I'm really feeling. And don't judge me. I play that a lot because that's just how I be feeling. Like, uh, it was kind of more so. The, the the title I I don't know it's me and I want to give me but like 
don't judge me for, for uh, this. How was it, the live performance? Like, how was it just performing the song? Oh, yeah, that, w- that was cool. Um, 6K Hefe, another cameraman, Dallas yeah, Forward. You know what I'm saying? Shot that. Um, and, you know what I'm saying? The girl V, another Dallas, you know, influencer, also helped direct and things like that. But they just wanted it to give, you know, real. The live performance is supposed to be you rapping right then and So. Uh, that's what it was. I, I definitely like that, man. The fact that you, like I said, that's work. I feel like work going to win. You know what I'm saying? Um sure. What Some of the lyrics in uh, that Chapter 21, you wrote that, right? Like I write all my music. Okay, so what, um, some of the, just break down some of those verses for me. Like, uh, like Yeah. <laughs> like, why would you say that? Like, what uh, happened to throw the shoes? That, give me some insight. Uh, why was your mind? <laughs> <laughs> I I was feeling some type of way. I wrote that a long time ago. That actually just dropped. You could see how small my daughter was mm-hmm. in that video. So um, it was a lot of emotions. That she was still small, so I just had her and stuff. How old and is she I now? just feel like she um, 18 when she won. Okay. She'll be um, two this October. So um, yeah, that was a minute ago because I was still breastfeeding. <laughs> so I know that was a minute ago. But um, I had a lot to say, but I don't like. I, I hate when I feed into that internet shit. That's, it's a Libra in me. I can't help it. It's 21 in me. But that's my biggest, like, thing. I'm trying not to feed into it. But I'm also saying, let me go on, Let me go in the booth. Let me just say what I got to say in the booth instead of going on this damn internet rant or going and running my mouth for somebody through text message. Um, because I said something like, uh, they crucified me when I chose to keep you. So me my career was over, wasn't no more pressure to the pink. Might as well take a seat on the bleachers. But mama said, fuck all them people. Because it was like, when I got pregnant, the main people that was supposed to root for me for this music shit told me, nah, if you don't get rid of that, handle that, you not gonna be nobody. You are not gonna go nowhere. This finna slow you down. It's gonna take you back. But it, it fucked me up because like all my uh, industry peers had baby mothers who was currently pregnant, but didn't nobody say, they gotta get rid of that, mm-hmm. they handle that. that. You the daddy handle that because it's not the same. In which I can understand that and I can respect that to a certain extent. But as a woman, nah, I ain't really feel that. I ain't really feel that from nobody. I don't care who said it, how they looked at it. As a mother now, I see what some people were saying where it could have did some things, but nah, it was all worth it. It 100%. I'll do it all over again. Wow. Um, I just that that's one thing, like, like just really like when you did the, the all state, um, that that shake back performance, like what what was that about? How, that mic check was it a mic check? You ain't like that one that much. I did. I was cool. Shame. It was cool. I I, I just I, you know me. You I love the stories you tell. I was about to say I did. That's what everybody been on lately. But it's hard for me because it's like from one direction I'm getting oh we want to hear your story, rap that real shit. But then from everybody else about not to be funny about my age, um they be telling me like you need to. Get on that glow realer shit. Like, you need to get on that old hype shit, like, catchy shit that's going to go viral on TikTok. They want me to talk about twerking and it's going to be a summer and all of this. When, to be honest, I love how I rap. I love, I'm me at all times. Hell yeah, I'm 21 years old and I'm fine. So, of course, sometimes I'm going to get on there and rap about the shit that I did, the shit that I do, getting money, hustling, whatever. But who, ain't nobody like me. I ain't never heard no girls just going no beat and really just, Tell a story about something so personal, so deep, something that nobody will never go on no radio and rap, no, you feel me, for the world to hear it, like, I don't, I don't hear that, so I'd rather be different, I'd rather just do me, but Allstate is like, I still gotta show that I got love for the life that I did live and the people who still in it, I ain't shitting on nobody, you feel me, a little bit, <laughs> cause, uh, baby, write some rhymes and leave that pimp, you feel me, like, I ain't shitting on nobody, but, I, I got more than just one talent. I'm not, I don't just got a big old aunt booty and can go up in the club and only shake ass to get my money. I'm, I'm a, I'm a lyrical, uh, what they be saying? You feel me? A lyrical art, a ly- yeah. Lyrical beast. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you mean, I don't, it's self-explanatory. What you tell us, it's self-explanatory. So, so the name. When, when I think about, when I think about Pink Pressure and, and just your journey, I seen a time when you and Rainwater kind of fell back from each other in the relationship as uh, far as him being your manager. Like, what was the cause of that and why, what happened? I was trying to say, because it, 
it ain't no other relationship. This is just my manager. Like, and correct. I say that because I'm not correcting you. I'm correcting a lot of shit. Yeah. This is oh, an okay. interview. So let me just go ahead and. Where the cameras at? Make that very That awesome. one right there, right here in your face. Oh, that okay. one over there is the camera or in the show. You don't want to go there. Because if I if I just keep it so gangsta, me and Rain have only physically met each other in person, maybe like I can count on my hands how many times we've actually been around each other. Most time it's, hey, I got this show lined up for you. Go record this song, do this feature. They send the money now. Ooh, da 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 get it done. Hang up, and I go get it done, and he make it happen, and it go. We ain't never even really been around each other, so you feel me? Like... Um, <laughs> so where do, where do people like, get that, that idea from? Uh, rain bitches look like me. I don't. Oh. How is that my fault? He like light skin skinny bitches. I don't know. Like mixed looking hoes. I don't. I, I'm sorry. Y'all don't cuss that much. I'm so sorry. So he kept it. I'm so, but he it, he keeps but it, he kept it professional, professional with he you. He did, but like it was like little weird stuff. Like certain interviews he did. Maybe the people that were interviewing them. Like I said, y'all come in a different approach. This is a grown space. This ain't no yeah. ain't no smoking up in here. Ain't no child shit going on. Can't bring a whole lot of people. Gotta you know sign what I'm that saying? paperwork. Gotta sign that paperwork. So it's this serious is real over shit. Here. So some people get on these interviews and want to be messy. They don't want to hear y'all story. They want to hear. They don't want to hear how you got here or where you want to go or where you trying to get to. That's not what they doing these interviews for, and that's why I never did one. The only other one I did was just as real as this one. So it's like, I don't know. More so, it was just the people or the media or. Even hoes who don't like me or where I got to because of how I got to it so fast feel like, oh, she must have had to fuck her way to the top. Like, one thing about it, I think Rain and my mama the same age. I'm on 39. What do I look like? Like, I don't know. Like, at this point, y'all just playing on my top. I understand strip up whatever case may be, OnlyFans, maybe they see, but, baby, it ain't never that freaky. But at the end I of the, got real talent. But at the end of the day, I'm I think a real artist. I think you got to block all that out because you're gonna have way more pressure than that as you yeah, elevate. You're gonna always have haters. It's gonna always be. I've heard some of the craziest stuff with some of the cr dopest females in, in, to come on this platform. There's gonna be a lot of challenges when you're dealing with this lifestyle with what you what you chose to be. You know, far as entertainment, 100. percent So at the end of the day, I just say, man, keep doing what you're doing, but stay focused on your craft. Because there's a lot of people, like you just said earlier, that look up to you because of what you, you know, what you, what you're doing, the way that you tell your story. So you can't really even be shook by nothing the naysayers say, and and you really need that, you know. You if you ain't got no haters, you really ain't popping. You gotta <laughs> have that, you know what I'm saying? That's motivation. So at the end of the day, that's my that that's what I like. I love it when niggas talking. At the end of the day, boss talk one on one, man. It's, it's not a game over here, like you just said. So it's at not the, at all. So, I guess to wrap it up, I'ma just say that the reason maybe why me and Rain haven't got that far or can't even get so far is because it's always somebody or something. And I'm not even gonna say for me, cause I really could give a fuck less. There's always gonna be something to say by the pictures I post, by the music I rap. Okay, like you said, it is what it is, it come with it. But I feel like that's also holding him back to a certain extent. As a man, Najer, you, you supposed to be a man before anything. He need to remember that it's just, that, that come with the business, like fuck them so. Like maybe cause it can affect his life, his personal life or my personal life or whatever the case may be, but I mean, I don't, all that. You gotta understand, when, when you in, in that seat, you know, um, when you been dealing with Rain, who definitely been through a lot with the Mo3 passing and all that stuff, that's a part of, you know, healing as well. And I tell him that all the time. I, I, I tell him he didn't give himself time to heal. Actually, you know, to be dealing with things, uh, really on the forefront, arguing with everybody, dealing with every situation that came at him, and then even to then embrace somebody like you and try to say, I'm gonna be a part of helping their career. I think Rain is the type of dude that he been through a lot, just like a lot of these cats, and they don't give themselves time to heal when they go through things. We got a lot of young people dying out here. We got a lot of things that's happening daily out here and then trying to face those things and be in front of a camera and be an example to the people who expect you to be their manager, there's a lot come with that on his side too. But for you guys to still be together, that's dope in itself. Just the fact that y'all still have a relationship and that y'all, and I say relationship in a working re relationship. No, I understand. So you, you guys are still kicking it and can do some great things together. Um, just how was it even meeting Rain and him becoming your manager? Uh. I'm blessed for every um, opportunity and position, you know, that Rain has put me in and things like that, but shit. 
it, it, it was I didn't it didn't come easy and I feel like a lot of bitches that be up under the post and stuff feel like working with Rain is the key to I don't I don't know what the hell they think but it's this a lot of them come that. on this show they want to work with Rain it's a lot of them come I here to it. meet Rain it's, it's and a no lot of it but. That man can, he, he, he do his job he do his job and he know what he doing as far as the business aspect of things but Rain is a character in itself if you dealt with three then you should already know. You get you you get what you get, and you don't throw a fit. Cause he could deal with three, and three could deal with him. You know what I'm saying? So I know that he can deal with me, and I can deal with him. It's just more so we do it at a distance because Rain Mouth is just as smart as mine. No matter how old he is, that motherfucker got a mouth on him. So it's like I don't know. We more so look past all of that though. That nigga got a lot of fucking kids now. That nigga just posted triplets. So therefore, <laughs> I may have to put my little. Pride to the side about whatever he said about maybe an outfit I wore or something he didn't like or he didn't like a song that I thought that was the hardest because at the end of the day that nigga got a lot of mouths to feed you know what I'm saying that's one thing Mo3 didn't play about is feeding his kids take care of his kids so nigga we gotta put all that shit to the side to get to the business let's get it because it really it ain't even really shit to put to the side he just feel like he in charge because he the manager and guess what I'm pink motherfucking pressure double P standing on it how the fuck is you gonna tell me Okay. okay. Well, <laughs> so did, did, did you? So you asked? Did you know Mo three and all? Did you? You guys? It's meet? crazy because everybody always asks me, which oh well, boohoo. You know what I'm saying? Like, uh, not boohoo, but like they be trying to throw that in my face. I grew up somewhere in McKinney, so it's like I know three whole family. Okay, they know of me since I was a little girl, like cousins and everything. These niggas I grew up with day to day basis. But as far as just me and three, nah, we was in two different uh, lanes at two different times. We was in two different lanes at two different times. Uh, I think he had already dove into North Dallas when I was growing up in McKinney because he is older than me. I'm 21. So uh, we never actually just met, um, so to say. He was liking my pictures and liking my, uh, you know what I'm saying, rap videos and stuff and even ended up telling me one of my videos was hard, like DMing me. So, of course, you know what I'm saying, there was interactions and he had heard my name before. But I didn't. I never got a chance, and I ain't get to do no song with him. So he one of my favorite rappers, like real life. So it kind of that hurt more than anything. To know of him, to know his family, and to know his people, and know, you know, what I'm saying what type of nigga he was is cool and everything. But like he really one of my favorite rappers, so I did, or was still one of, you know, what I'm saying make that happen. That's that's a little goal of mine. Yeah, I I think that's that's live that you now you know you get to. You get to hear those stories. You, I mean, if anytime you're dealing with a song and you're dealing with rain, that same relationship he had with Mo Three, he he pretty much is in, injecting his his own mentality on what you do. Mm -hmm. You know, far as from his perspective of how he feel, same mm -hmm. way he would have done with Mo Three. Uh, they both was you know in that together from the stories I hear about them. So be, he be on all our ass though, like. He be like, well, three want to play to me, baby C, bump, you know, anybody around that's working with Rain, he he not just going to make, you know, single nobody out. Everybody going to feel like he's going to be like, well, three wouldn't have slept in. He would have got up and he would have stayed in that studio even if he was. I mean, and so you need to get on that. Like, let's get it because he want to be a star. Do you want to be a star? Like, he be asking us, you know what I'm saying? Like, how bad do you really want it? You know what I'm saying? So I know for sure that. The, the business aspect and you got to think of it people are expecting a lot a lot of people I hear it all the time he'll never get another Mo3 yeah. he'll never be able to do this again he'll never I hear that all the time niggas that they call me because he be on my show and they'll they'll straight tell me like that nigga ain't gonna never be able to do this well then when they get in the comments and be like female 3 or then he say you know this the closest thing to 3 that I done heard it's female wise since I they give me big ass shoes to have to step up in so every move I make I feel like I gotta Watch what I'm doing or watch what I'm saying and how I'm moving because they looking up to me like, shit, what, what you going to do? You got the platform. You got the, you know what I'm saying, the audience. The It's really more so, uh, I guess, the support. Like, <laughs> nobody will ever, uh, I could say, love an artist. I feel like three got a lot of love. Like, they love that man. They rhyme about that man. They not playing about him. So, it's like uh, more so that support that I'm waiting on. But... But 100%, they give me big-ass shoes to fill, and that shit's scary sometimes. Do you, um, who would you like to work with? If you had, could pick anybody to work with. Um, Don't have to be nobody local. It could be any mega star. Say, it could be anybody. Like, I guess I go female-wise. I'm a female, uh, like a boss-ass bitch that I looked up to when she started rapping and made her little way cash doll. I love me some cash doll. Nicki Minaj, like... The, the the OG when it comes to that. So, of course, I would love to meet Nikki. Even Cardi, you know what I'm saying? 
I'm not in the beef. I don't know y'all. So I'm I'm Cardi and Nikki and uh Cash Doll. Love me some uh Stunner Girl trending right now, Queen Key. I like underground females better than I do mainstream. I'ma keep it gangster like I did probably just say, didn't say nobody you know. There's a song that's out, uh my my coochie pink and my booty hole brown or something. Like what's up with that song? And who's saying who is that? That's uh, big sexy red. Uh, what is uh, what? Is, I mean, uh, when you, is this is this? Do you like that song? Let's be real. Okay, boss talk one on one. Yeah, hell yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta keep it real. Yeah. No. I mean, in the club, if I'm drunk and I'm my ah, like yeah. it's, uh, okay. I think that's where they were going off of like marketing wise. Hey, she did her thing. It's viral. It's everywhere. Everybody's playing it and laughing. But talent wise, the rap game is. <laughs> so you're not it's not if they, something if that they, you that, that was like if they put chapter 21 up there and put her song up there most people's gonna choose that song because they wanna get drunk shake ass in the club they don't wanna hear a, a, a stripper talk about being a single mom so it's like but lyrically if I broke that song down and we went bar for bar for both songs it's like there's no comparison so how is that viral and that's, but let me ask yeah. you a question but the generation that we're in right now it's more it's not about talent it's not, not at all. So it's about that catchy, who clout, can be catchy, yeah. clout, who can... Funny, say wild stuff. Exactly. Yeah. So how do you TikTok feel about that? It's hard for me because I'm not no damn TikTok, TikTok rapper. Like, I try, I try. But it's more so like, if I'm going to get on a beat, I want to say something that you going to remember what the fuck I said. I like double entendres. I like making people think about breaking down the bars. I'm trying to... Make the last two words rhyme with the next two, not just one. Like I'm, I'm really rapping. I'm really an artist. I sang too and some other stuff. So like, all that TikTok rapping, slow rapping, dumbing it down. I'm not really into it. I'm not discrediting nobody who do it because them people making bank. Like if so you know, thought about doing TikTok, both. I'm just saying I try. It's not yeah. really. I, I it don't just know not how you. not to rap. Like to not yeah. just rap and keep rapping. That's hard for it. me to try to dumb down my lyrics when I think about the words when I sing. Them. I do. I want to say some shit like. I don't want to just say anything. From Garfield, right? <laughs> all the way to Pink. Uh, listen, until all the way to Chapter 21. Right. 100%. What yeah. is the, what is, hey, uh, what, I, this Garfield journey, what has this 17. thing been? That's right. Well, this has been a long Seven, journey. Pink Pressure 17 with no kids. That, that would, that's what I was trying to explain when I said from going from Garfield to being up in the house by myself trying to become a mama. That, that right there was a hardship <laughs> because <laughs> I was just literally just saying whatever, doing whatever, having the time of my life because I had no responsibilities. I didn't, I was literally in a new state down there every day when I was 17, 18. I was just having fun. I was a rapper. I was getting to go places, perform at club, do this, do that. So there's a complete difference because now I got somebody who not only I could live for, who looks up to me, who I'm trying to change for. And, and I don't know, I really didn't have a, 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 a motivation or some some to go to go hard for until until that chapter 21 hit and now I'm 21 with a one year old and we doing some other shit already top three artists of all time dead or alive any genre <sighs> okay y'all already know I said three like and I'm not just so he's your number one I'm not saying that just say it. I can't line them up that's kind of hard because like mm, I would I would just say all time, damn! You just made any it. genre. Damn, I I said this in the interview before, and I feel like people gonna hate on me, but I love me some Mary J. Blige. Oh my god, I'm sorry. Like that's so old school. I was raised by my grandma. She she loved Mary J. I Do love you watch Mary her J. in Ghosts? No, I don't watch Ghosts. Y'all can get on my trail. I don't watch <laughs> Ghosts. I don't watch TV like that. I don't have my glasses right now, and I'm trying to get it together. That's some righteous shit. But uh, <laughs> damn, I can't believe I just put her in my top three. But like. I don't said, know her music touched me. You, you said, said Mo3, Mo3 and Mary, and Mary J. J. Who is it? Who is it? See, I can't believe I put Mary J. They go clown me for this. Okay. That's real, though. But she's good, uh, though. What you talking about? Well, that's Third, for the younger people she He, he an underground artist. His name Tech TC. He from Baton Rouge. Like, wow. uh, his Why you like really, him? When he talk, um, also just him as a man. I like people who, when you meet them, they heart match their music. Oh, I feel man. like when people met three, that's why so many his death affected so many people. Cause when they met him, his heart, his smile, and shit that matched his music. He saying that shit, and you could feel it when he rap. When you put on a certain song and it just give you chills, and you can just cry to it, you can laugh to it, you can turn up to it, whatever case may be. That's real, and that nigga a real artist. So you know what I'm saying? I just I have to say that I, I can't give a shout out to the other person that I would have put up in there. Who, who is who? What, what's your favorite uh, Mo three song? 
my favorite Motri song right now or all time. All time. All time. Ooh, um, damn, why is that? That's so hard of a choice because I play this nigga music every day, all day, all the songs. <laughs> but right now, uh, I ain't gonna lie, Second Chance, that shit hit me more so like if that nigga was talking to me. <laughs> like, I don't know. I, when that song come on, Sometimes I be like tripping, like is this thing up in this song, like I be getting chill so much and it's like Second Chance just maybe was one of his greatest songs to me because word for word, uh, I'm a female too, I'm a woman, that's a man. He made a song that word for word, I felt that. So like Second Chance for sure, I'll I go, I'll lock in with that. Sorry for the OG fans, you know, I could have said some old shit, but. Where do you see yourself in like by the end of the year? Who by the end of the year? What kind of motion you want to see? I need to be really rapping and stop bullshitting with myself because I ain't know how many people believed in me. Like when I came on here, y'all just oh, you, you know, know gave me my flowers. Like that kind of made me think, you okay, Pink, stop playing. Like in rain, I ain't gonna lie, rain tell me all the time. Like in Dallas, you don't know how many people actually right. support you. And I'm like, man, till so I'm at the gas station pumping my gas at nine o'clock in the morning, looking crusty as hell. And nigga, like. Pink, hold on, hold on, my girl in the car, hold on, my girl, she right here in the car, she loved, what's that song, girl, I be telling her to turn that shit off, it's just, I'm down, I'm pumping my gas, just right by my house, and somebody yeah, know me, you mm -hmm. feel me, so it's like, all the way, I was in Tennessee, Nashville, I had a mask on, corona mask, a nigga seen the broken heart and was like, hold on, Garfield, I said, I, this was at the time, you know, <laughs> but it's just like, it still feel good, because it's like, you don't know how many people you really touching, you really don't, and so I need to So what's stopping you, just right. you? Yeah, probably overthinking. Probably overthinking everything. Artists is their biggest critiques, their biggest critics. So, like, and I don't have maybe, like, so much of a team who just be like, pink, you hard, man, fuck that. Come on, we going to the studio. Get up. Mm -hmm. I got to, I don't, Rain ain't been doing that as much since the little, since we fell off a little bit or whatever the case may be. And then the whole team as a whole kind of just been on some other shit. So it's like, as far as just having a home base or, Somebody to just tell me, like, when I'm telling myself, nah, I'll tell me, yeah, come on, you don't have that option because if me, I go back to doing what I know and just thug that out that way. Let me give you some advice. And I, I'm not in the music industry or anything like that. I, I'm just mm -hmm. saying this. The same way how you talked about the things that you had to do for your baby. There was nobody but you. You had to get up. You couldn't tell yourself, I didn't feel like feeding her today. I couldn't feel like you need to treat your, your career the same way. Stop being negative towards yourself. Stop being such critic to yourself. Get up and say, you know what? My career is also my second baby, so I got to get this for me. Wow. Baby C. You ever met Baby C? Would you like, mm -hmm. do you guys ever do yeah. anything together? Or would y'all ever do anything together? Yeah, that's my dog. We're going to get on a song. We got something in the works right now. Uh, we, was supposed, we actually recorded a song on the same beat, like both of us. So Rain was going to try to like either let one get on the other or the other, but... It turned out being like Rain favorite song of mine, so that went that way. But yeah, for sure, um, I respect Baby C a lot because he a real father. Yeah. Anytime I tell Baby C, what you doing? You know what I'm saying? You been in the studio? Yup, just got my kids. You know what I'm saying? Just chilling with my kids. Like that nigga, a real daddy. And everybody, a lot of artists, artists maybe that's been on your show. I don't know. <laughs> um, don't be daddy. So Baby C definitely get my uh, flowers out the gate for that. Wow, real nigga. that's big. Um, so I think I think that's about mm -hmm. it. You know, um, I, I just want to say, how can people get a hold to you if they're trying to link up with you? Just trying to get a you know, feature. Get a some. feature. Just trying to just trying to you book know you. book you or show you love. Um, my Instagram is pressure p two p's on the pressure. Maybe an extra e at the end. It'll pop up though. Or if you type in pink pressure, it should pop up. It's like thirty eight k. Um, if not, rain. He's pretty hard to get to reach, but um, that's always an option because right now, currently, we, you know what I'm saying, we're still working together. So you could always reach out to me through Instagram. I usually go through my DMs and check as far as business. I'm going to reply. Don't DM me like you're looking real sexy tonight. Don't start <laughs> like that. I did, I'm not going to know you want a feature, that you want to work. But, you know, if it's about business, I, I respond to DMs. I'm not bougie. And I work wow. with our budget, so it's like, you know what I'm saying? I, I come it. from nothing. I, I know if a nigga can't. I'm not charging a thousand dollars. You know what I'm saying? I, I was God given with this talent. I was blessed, so therefore I would like to give back as much as I can. But I do got to pay my bills somehow, some way. Hey. Already, um, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you for having I, me. I think I think you live, and I can't wait to get you back on here after we kill it the next quarter. You see, what I'm saying the next quarter and the next quarter. 
Boom, you back on Boss Talk 101 for the holidays, maybe. Or, 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 or even we giving something away for back to school and we bring you on to bless a kid or be here for, sure. for a kid. It's stuff like that. That's what we do over for here. Sure. We grown over here at Boss Talk 101. Yeah, I like you here. I would love to come back. The drinks was good. I'm feeling it. You know, we at the end. Man. And I enjoyed it. Real respectful we, and just real. I, I told you I don't like that messy shit. No. You is a little, you be trying to jost a little well, bit. I'm going to be me. John. Listen, Boss Talk you 101, know, one of the coldest but, platforms in this area. Yeah, so we got to her. bring it. You know what I'm saying? Her, for real. Y'all better get up here. Man. Uh, hey, man, thank you and we love you. Thank you and we love you. Me and I my wife that. of 20 years. Uh, we we love what we do, and so when so we now see y'all got my word, when I we see an opportunity to bring somebody in way. and kick it with them, it's real special to us. You become family automatically. So thank you for coming over here and joining Boss Talk One Hundred and One. It's been another great segment. The Boss Talk One Hundred and One, where the so. bosses talk, and we out. Yeah, we on Boss Talk One Hundred and One. Yeah, we gonna talk.